two parts there. So the first part is still continuing from the same idea that we were doing yesterday, is the lowest common denominator. So I look at these two denominators, and are they completely different from one another? Or can I factor one and it'll have something that's in common with the other one? Can you factor this one at all? There's no square, so you're definitely not gonna have the two sets of parentheses, right? But does four and five have anything in common that I could factor out? No, so I cannot factor this any further. So then you just ask yourself, what do they have in common and what do they have different, right? Well, they have nothing in common in this particular case. So there's not gonna be any part that they have in common, but as far as what they have different, this one has a solitary X and this one has a four X plus five. So both of these factors would be included in my common denominator, okay? So this is the answer. This is my common denominator. You may see it whenever you have a single guy, they don't usually put them in parentheses. They just put it outside like that. Either way is fine, okay? Whether the parentheses are there or whether they're not. If it's just a single guy, you don't need them, okay? So then they start getting in, before we add and subtract, they start talking about how to write equivalent fractions. Because you may have this in one of your fractions, and you may know that this is the common denominator. Well, how do you turn this fraction into something with that common denominator? That's why in the last lecture, I kept writing in red what I would have to multiply by to get the common denominator, right? Because I wanted you to already start thinking about that. So in this case, I already have the five, don't I? And I already have V cubed, but I need V six, which means what should I be multiplying by here to get V six? Not V squared, because then that's three plus two, which is only five, right? So how many more do I need? V cubed. I need V cubed. So then three plus three will give me the six, okay? Whatever you do to the bottom, in order to keep a ratio the same, the same relevant ratio, right? If it's two thirds, you need to keep it two thirds, right? You can't just change the, the makeup. So whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. And it's like multiplying by a really weird one, right? V cubed over V cubed, isn't that just one? But it's a clever one <laughs> so that we can get that common denominator. And if I multiply four times V cubed, you just end up with four V cubed. And that's all they want you to type in that box up there. All of these are writing equivalent expressions. So example seven, same thing. They figured out that this is the common denominator. And so they want you to figure out how you're gonna get that common denominator. This is not in its factored form. Normally when we get common denominators, they're in their factored form. Okay, this one's not. So I'm just temporarily gonna put it in its factored form. What does 21V and six have in common? What can they both be divided by? Three. Three, and if I do that, I would have seven V and then plus two. Now it's a little bit clearer as to what they did to this, right? What did they do to it? They multiplied it by three, didn't they? They took this whole thing and multiplied it by three and that's how they got 21V plus six, isn't it? So then that's exactly what I'm gonna do to the top. But what do I get when I multiply three times negative six? Negative 18. And so that's gonna be the new numerator, okay? Here, be careful. These are in the right order, but what did we say happens if you have a negative in the front? What do you have to do? You have to factor it out. If I factor out the negative one, what would be inside the parentheses? X plus seven. X plus seven. Now this one's a little bit weird because here you have the negative one and then here you don't, right? But you're still doing the same thing. What did they multiply by to get from here to here? A negative one. If you multiply by a negative one, won't this negative one and that negative one just be positive one, right? And then you just end up with the x plus seven all by itself. So whatever I did to the bottom, 
That's exactly what I need to do to the top. But this time you have two terms on top. So what happens to that negative one then? Do you know the word or show me with your hand? What am I supposed to do with that negative one? No, it's already there at the bottom. That's how we got this guy. But now I need to multiply negative one to the top. The word is distribute or anyone could have gone like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the same thing. You got to multiply it, but you got to multiply it to both of them, yeah. right? So you got to multiply it to this term and this term. So that's going to be a negative 8, and then it's going to turn it to a positive x, okay? And this is what they're going to want in the numerator. And you could rearrange them if you want. You could write x in front and then a minus 8. Those are the exact same thing, okay? So now, they're, before we get into these again, because we are going to have to continue to do this, but before we get into that, they're going to have you add and subtract fractions that already have the same denominator. So this is just the easy part to get you familiar to the pattern that's happening, right? When you add fractions or subtract fractions, you should always be keeping the denominator the same and then adding or subtracting the tops. But that can only occur if they have the same denominator already. And if you look at example 5, they have the same already. Example 6 has the same. Example 7 has the same. Example 8 is where something different is going to happen. Okay? But for all three of these, we can just use the rule right away. I'm going to keep my denominator the same, and I'm just going to subtract the numerators. So you end up with 5 over C. Here, the same thing. I'm going to keep my denominator the same, and I'm just going to add the numerators. And unfortunately, this can't reduce or, or factor and cancel, nothing. It doesn't, nothing's going to happen here. It just stays like that. Same with this one. The denominator is the same, so I'm going to put 2B. But I have 5B plus 3 plus 3B minus 5. Now when it has a plus sign, it doesn't really matter. But if this were a minus sign, you would have to remember that you are subtracting that entire numerator. So if this were a minus in the middle, it would have to be distributed to both, okay? I got lucky because it's a plus. So even if you didn't realize that you were doing the whole numerator plus the whole numerator, um, you still would have ended up with it correct. But if it were subtract, it's possible you could get it wrong if you don't distribute that sign, okay? So this should be 5B plus 3, because there's nothing to distribute here. <laughs> Bless you. Here there's a positive. What's a positive times a positive? A positive. And what's a positive times a negative? A negative. And so then if I combine my like terms, I have 8B minus... 2, this one can be reduced. Can I factor something out from the top? Is there any number that goes both into 8B and 2? Two? 2. So I'd have 4B minus 1. And then this 2 can cancel with that 2 because they're both factors. Those 2's are both being multiplied by something, right? So you can cancel them or reduce them and you end up with 4B minus 1 over B. Now this B cannot cancel because not only is it being multiplied by something, it's also being subtracted, right? So you cannot cancel that B, okay? It has to just be multiplied only in order to cancel it. So that's the ones that have like terms already. For the ones that don't have the common denominator, we have to use that idea, both of the two ideas together. We have to first find the common denominator, and then we have to make both of the fractions have that common denominator, okay? So here, what would the common denominator be? Do they have anything the same? five C and nine C, do they have anything in common? 
the C. And then between the numbers, remember the strategy. Go with the big one first. Can 5 go into 9 even? No. So we start listing its multiples. Can 5 go into 18? Nope. What about 27? Or 36? Or 45? 45, yes, right? So my LCD is going to be 45C, which means I need to have 45C downstairs for both. Now this is where you get into those first example two, three, and four again, right? What do you have to multiply this by to get 45C? Mm -hmm. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So this becomes 18. What do you have to multiply this fraction by to get the common denominator? Mm -hmm. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. And then now it's just like example five and six, right? You keep your denominator the same, and 18 minus 5 is 13. If these numbers could reduce, you would reduce them, but they don't. So it stays like that.